Welcome friends. In the previous class, we have been learning about the multiple razoring. And in this uh, multiple razoring, we have seen the concept of what is the end effect and the razoring effect. And we have seen the need for adopting multiple razors. If the feeding length right, is uh, less than the casting length. Now, let us continue this. Now, we will come across three more terms called feeding distance, feeding length and center line shrinkage. Of course, this feeding distance we have already seen. Now, let us learn feeding length and the center line shrinkage. Now, there is a difference between feeding distance and feeding length. For example, say this is the casting, this whole thing is the casting and this is the razor, this is the razor. Now, around the razor, there is a razor zone is there, means in this zone, in this circle, there is no shrinkage because the razor is present. Now, outside this razor zone, you can see here EZL, right, means end effect zone, end zone or simply, so that we can see here this much say starting from the end. So, this is the end of the casting, right? starting from here up to here, this dotted portion is the end zone. Means, in this portion, there is no shrinkage cavity because it is covered by the end effect and this much is covered by the razoring effect. Now, here we can see EZL means end zone length. So, this is the EZL, you can see this is the end zone length. Next one RZL that is the length covered by the razor effect. So, this is that one RZL, RZL. Next one feeding distance. Feeding distance means it is the sum of razor effect and end effect. Here we can see, so here this much is the or what is a razor effect RZL which is the feeding distance which is covered in the what is a razor zone, this is the uh, razor effect, this is the razor effect. Now, the, from here to here, so from this end to this end, you see this is the uh, end zone up to this point, this is the end effect. So, the sum of end effect and razor effect is known as the feeding distance. Now, what is the feeding length? Now, in this case, feeding distance is equal to feeding length, means the length of the casting is equal to, means the, the this portion, this portion the length diagonally is equal to feeding distance. That is why feeding length is equal to feeding distance in this section, means casting section is just covered by the razor zones and the end zones. Now, we will see the difference between the um, what is a feeding distance and feeding length more clearly. Now, let us see here. Now, the length of the casting is a little more than the previous one. Now, uh, the length is such that this is the end zone, the end zone length is this much. This much is the razor zone length from here, but if we start from here, and measure like this, from here to here, this much portion is the RZL means start from here and you end here. So, this is the razor effect. Now, where is the end effect? End effect starts from here, here to here. So, that is the end effect. So, this sum of end effect and razor effect is the feeding distance. Now, you can see there is a gap, right? means that including that gap means a sum of this razor effect, sum of this end effect and sum of that gap, sum of these three components is known as the feeding length, means that is the actual length in the casting uh, measured diagonally in this case. right? So, here what we can conclude? Feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. Shrinkage porosity forms in the shaded sections of the casting not covered by the razor zone or the end zones. For example, you see up to this much portion, the casting uh, it is covered by the razor 
zone. So, there is no possibility of formation of the string case cavity up to here. Now, this much portion right this much portion is the end zone. So, in this there is a no chance of formation of the uh, shrink case cavity because of the end effect. Now, what about to this portion starting from here say this shaded portion this is not covered by the razor effect this is not covered by the end effect. So, there will be shrink case cavity will be there. Why a shrink case cavity is there? because in this case the feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. So, there should not be any gap between E z del and R z del where E z del is the end zone length and R z del is the razor zone length, but unfortunately in this case the, this is the E z what say E z del and this is the R z del there is a gap. So, that is how a shrinkage can take place in this case. Now, let us see some cases feeding distance is equal to the feeding length means the length of the casting is such that the what say that section to be fed by the razor is equal to the feeding distance. Then what will happen? No shrinkage along the feeding length say so for example, this is the casting this is the casting and this is the razor. Now, there will be razor effect will be there the razor effect will be 2 t means uh, the what is the distance covered by the razor to prevent shrinkage that is 2 t here we can see. Now, this is end effect what is that end effect distance covered by the edges of the casting to prevent the shrinkage cavity. So, this is 2.5 t. So, sum of these components is known as the feeding distance and that is equal to 4.5 t one side it is 4.5 t and the other side is also it is 4.5 t where t is the thickness of the uh, what say slab or thickness of the section of the casting to be fed by the concerned razor. Now, let us see another case where two razors are used right in this case also the feeding distance is equal to feeding length here we can see uh, from here he right this is one razor one side there is 2 t that is the razor effect and the other side there is 2 t that is the razor effect and the distance total distance or the total feeding distance between these two razors is 2 t plus 2 t that is 4 t and we have arranged the razor such that the distance between these two razors is exactly equal to 2 t. So, there is no question of formation of the shrinkage cavity. Now, let us see another case feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. You see here this is the casting and there is single razor is there this is the razor. Now, this is the length of that section to be fed by this casting this razor. Now, here we can see razor effect is there means distance covered by the razor to prevent the shrinkage cav cavity that is 2 t and this is the end effect 2.5 t that is the distance covered by the edge of the casting to prevent the shrinkage cavity. So, this is 2.5 t. So, in this portion there is no shrinkage cavity because of the end effect. In this portion there is no shrinkage cavity because of the razor effect. Now, what about this portion? This portion is not covered by the razor or it is not covered by the razor effect and it is not covered by the end effect. Then what will happen? There will be shrink case will be there. You can see this is known as the center line shrink case, right? So center line shrink case can take place when feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. Feeding length means the actual length falling under the load of the razor. So this whole length is the feeding length, whereas feeding distance is the sum of the end effect and the razor effect. So, in this case the feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. So, that is how a center line shrinkage cavity what is a defect is arising here and we can see another case where there are two razors and for this one razor one side there is 2 t that is the razor effect. So, there is no question of shrinkage cavity in this region 
and this is another razor and here there is razor effect 2T where T is the thickness of the section. Now, in this region also there is no shrinkage cavity because of the razor effect. Now, what about this portion? This is not covered by the this razor, the left side razor, this is not covered by the right side razor, then what will happen? Of course, there is no question of the end effect because there is no edge, only two razors are there on both sides, then what will happen? The center portion which is not covered by either of the razors, there, there will be shrinkage cavity. Here also feeding length is greater than the feeding distance. Now, here what is the feeding distance? The feeding distance is here it is 2 t and here it is 2 t. The total feeding distance between these two razors is 4 t. Whereas, the feeding length the actual distance falling under the two razors is greater than the feeding distance that is how a shrinkage what is a cavity will take place. So, we will call it as the center line shrinkage here also. So, this is the center line shrinkage. Ways to increase the feeding distance. So, now we just now we have seen that when the feeding length is greater than the feeding distance, a what is a center line shrinkage defect will arise. Now, at any cost we have to see that the feeding distance we have to increase or to improve. How to improve? We can place a chill here. For example, this is the casting and this is the razor and again here you can see there is 2 t that is the razor effect and right here there, there will be 2.5 t that is the end effect and we can increase the end effect by placing a chill here. So, chill is a steel block which is placed on the side of the mould wall right then what will happen? It rapidly increases the heat because of that more what say part of the casting will be solidifying in lesser time that is how the end effect will be more compared to the case where there, where is, there is no chill. So, by placing a chill on the uh, in, inside the mould we can increase the feeding distance. Thus, we can also increase the efficiency of the razor. Next one let us see uh, uh, we are uh, what is a learning about the modification of the design. So, instead of going for a single razor if we go for multiple razors, we can have a better efficiency that is what we have seen under the multiple razoring. Now, we will see another what is a topic called bottle razoring. By incorporating bottle, bottle razoring, we can improve the razor efficiency. What is this bottle razoring or what is a bottle razor? Bottle razoring, a primary shrinkage hole right, a pipe is created quickly in a razor right. So, this what is a pipe because of this pipe the metal will be forced inside the mould cavity. A pipe is created on the sides of the razor. Because of that the molten metal which is present in the razor will be pushed inside because of the atmospheric pressure right. If the liquid metal in the razor is not open to the atmosphere then the razor will not function. So, because of the atmospheric pressure once a pipe is created on the both the sides around the what say what say surface right the molten metal will be pushed inside the cavity. Atmospheric pressure is necessary to push the metal into the casting. A bottle razor it is also known as Hain razor has such a small area at the top diameter that will begin to pipe very quickly. What is the specialty of a bottle razor? its top diameter will be very small right. So, because of that the what say piping takes place very quickly means uh, a pipe will be created at the top means the what say molten metal near the mould wall will be solidifying quickly a circular pipe is created and inside there will be liquid metal that will be pushed into the molten what say cavity. So, in order to have sufficient feed metal volume, these razors must be taller than the classical design. So, usually we have seen that especially in the NRL method, what is the H by D ratio? It, it will be between 0.5 to 1, the H by D ratio should not be greater than 1, but here the length of the uh, what say razors will be more than the conventional razors. The height to diameter ratio is 1.5 to 1. So, this is the typical height to diameter ratio for a bottle razor. 
Now, this is the typical appearance of a bottle razor. You can see this whole thing is a bottle razor. See, it is uh, slanting, right? At the bottom, this is the bottom diameter. You can see razor bottom diameter is this much starting from here to here. Whereas, this is the top diameter. You see, top diameter is very small, whereas bottom diameter is very large. And here, we can see this is the gate, right? Through this gate, right, molten metal enters and this is the, this side is the casting. And this is the height of the razor. You can see this is the height of the razor. Now, we come across a, a, another interesting term called significant modulus of the casting. What is this significant modulus? This significant modulus, we can see, uh, say there is a difference in the diameters of the razor. At the top, it is very small. At the bottom, it is very large. Now, there is a difference between the uh, what say diameters both at the top and the bottom. Now, half of this difference in the diameters is known as the significant modulus, right? Half of that difference that is indicated by m s. Now, at the bottom, it will be 2 m s and this side there will be 2 m s. Formula for bottle razor, how to design the bottle razor, right? Right, razor bottom diameter is equal to 4 into m s plus razor top diameter. The cast, casting feed metal required is equal to 4 percent of the casting weight. Razor feed volume determined by the razor top diameter and height to diameter ratio. Use tallest razor possible for the flask size and razor height is equal to h by d ratio into razor top diameter. Now, this is the what is a feed metal table for bottle razor in different cases means when the h by d ratio is changing in different cases. So, these are the what is a feed metal what is a uh, diameters in different cases. Here we can see h by d ratio is equal to 8 is to 1. Now, when the top diameter is 10 what is a mm the feed weight is equal to 44 grams. When the top diameter 20 mm, the feed weight is equal to 352 grams. When the top diameter is 30 mm, it is 1186 grams. When the top diameter is 40 mm, the feed weight is 2813 grams. And when the top diameter is 50 mm, the feed weight is 5495 grams. So, these are the cases when h by d ratio is equal to 8 is to 1. Now, h by d ratio is 6 is to 1, if that be the case, when the top diameter is 10 mm, the feed weight is 32 grams. When the top diameter is 20 mm, the feed weight is 264 grams. When the top diameter is 30 mm, the feed weight is 890 grams. When the top diameter is 40 mm, the feed weight is 2110 grams. When the top diameter is 50 mm, the feed weight is 4,121 grams. So, this, these are the cases when h by d ratio is equal to 6 is to 1. Now, let us see another case where h by d ratio is equal to 5 is to 1. When the top diameter is 10 mm, the feed weight is 28 grams. When the top diameter is 20 mm, the feed weight is 219 grams. When the top weight is 30, top diameter is 30 mm, the feed weight is 741 grams. When the top diameter is 40 mm, the feed weight is 1758 grams. When the top diameter is 50 mm, the feed weight is 3434 grams. So, this is the case when the h by d ratio is equal to 5 is to 1. Now, let us solve a problem. The weight of a casting is 85 kilograms. The height of the cope is 330 mm. If the significant modulus of the casting m s is 15 mm, design the bottle razor for the casting. Now, we have to design the bottle razor. Casting weight is equal to 85 grams given, cope height is equal to 330 mm, significant modulus of the casting m s is equal to 15 mm, feed metal required formula we have already seen 4 percent of the casting weight that is equal to 3400 grams. So, this is the feed metal. Now, we need to for this feed metal, 
we need to find out the dimensions of the bottle riser. Choose from the table the riser top diameter and uh, H by D ratio corresponding to 3434 grams of the feed metal, right. So, this is the what is a standard table for the bottle riser and here we can see that much what is a uh, feed metal we can see here in this case 3434 grams. So, means so this is the diameter top diameter of the bottle riser and say this is the H by D ratio 5 is to 1 accordingly we can design the bottle riser that be the case then what will happen riser top diameter corresponding to 3434 grams of feed metal is equal to 50 mm H by D ratio is equal to 5 is to 1. Now, riser bot bottom diameter is equal to 4 into m s plus riser top diameter where m s is the significant modulus. Now, that is equal to 4 into 15 mm plus 50 that is equal to 110 mm. So, the riser height is equal to H by D ratio is 5 is to 1. So, riser height is equal to 5 into 50 that is equal to 250 mm. So, this is the riser height and what about the bottom diameter? Bottom diameter is 110 mm. What about the top diameter? 50 mm. So, this is the design for the bottle riser in this case. Now, we are uh, seeing uh, learning about the case how to modify the design of the riser to improve the riser's efficiency. Under that, we have seen we can go for the multiple risers and also we can go for the bottle riser. Now, there is a term called another topic called safety margin by what say incorporating the safety margin by what say carefully designing the safety margin we can improve the riser's efficiency. Now, let us see what is this safety margin. You can see this one this is the casting and this is the riser. Now, once we what say pour the molten metal immediately this much portion right a pipe is created here on the sides. Now, inside the liquid metal and it flows this liquid metal here and it will be feeding the casting. Thus, there is a what is a cavity will be created here, a cavity will be created. So, this much portion there is a cavity and this is the solidified portion. Now, this cavity is like a right pipe and it comes and it is stopping here. Now, what is this? This is the safety margin. Safety margin SM is defined as the distance from the razor casting contact surface to the tip of the razor pipe. So, this is the safety margin. Now, what does this indicate? Now, when the if this safety margin is just touching the what is a casting no problem. Suppose, if this safety margin is going below the casting surface means what does it mean? There is shrinkage cavity is there. On the other hand, if the safety margin is too much, what does it mean? Means, from this riser you see only this much length of the riser is utilized for the feeding of the casting. What about this, this much length of the casting starting from the surface of the casting to here? That much portion of the riser is not involved in the feeding of the casting. Now, if the safety margin is more and more what will happen that extra portion or that extra length of the riser is not involved in feeding of the casting means that is a waste is only. So, the safety margin should be minimum it should not be too much on the other hand it should not be 0 right 0 means it will be just touching and it should not be negative. Safety margin for different alloys is to be found found out by experimentation. The height of the razor should be such that the safety margin does not exceed 2 to 5 centimeters, right. If the safety margin is more than 5 centimeters, certainly there would not be any shrinkage cavity, but that is a wastage of the razor material. Whatever what is a uh, length of the razor covered in that safety margin is waste, and on the other hand, it should not be too less right the in such a case there may be a shrinkage cavity and it should not be negative so the height of the what say the length of the safety margin be, should be between 2 to 5 centimeters so this safety margin 
by properly designing the safety margin by conducting the experiments and we have to find out the safety margin for different cast alloys. Accordingly, we have to fix up the uh, what is the height of the razor, then the uh, efficiency of the razor will be improved. If the safety margin is negative, then the razor pipe extends into the casting. In such a case, shrinkage cavity will arise in the casting. Next one, uh, there is another topic called razor necking. So, this is also a modification to the razor design. With this also, with this razor necking also, we can improve the effic efficiency of the razor. What is this razor necking? Now, you can see here. So, this is the razor and the casting is this side. Now, the razor is given a necking here. So, this will improve the efficiency of the razor. Now, here we can see T is the thickness of the casting of the or the section to be fed by the razor and D is the diameter of the razor. H n is the thickness of the neck, this much portion is the H n is the thickness of the neck that is equal to 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 times the thickness of the casting or the thickness of the section to be fed. Next one L n is the radius of the neck, this is the L n that is equal to d by 3, where d is the diameter of the razor. Next one w n is equal to width of the neck that is equal to 2.5 times L n plus 0.18 d. So, by incorporating razor necking, we can improve the efficiency of the razor. Finally, tapering is there. By tapering means uh, by giving a taper to the casting, we can improve the razor's efficiency. Here we can see this is the casting, this is the casting, this is the casting and this is the razor. Now, uh, taper is provided you can see here, uh, here the thickness is more and slowly the thickness is reduced. This will definitely improve the performance of the razor. Now, here we can see this is the end zone length end effect and here we can see this is the razor zone length right and here a taper is given. So, because of this taper the what say efficiency of the razor will be certainly improving. Now, uh, how to choose this taper and this is the what say graph available to us and here we can see on the x axis width to width to thickness ratio w by t on the x axis. On the y axis we can see taper that is equal to height by length, height of the taper divided by length of the taper and here we can see the width to thickness ratio 1 to 3 up to 9 and here we can see the taper h divided by l. So, it is this much right. So, by what say considering this graph we can successfully what say design the taper for the casting which will definitely improve the efficiency of the razor. Now, computers in design in razor design. So far, we have been learning about the uh, different methods of the razor design. We have seen the Keynes method which was very tedious and uh, uh, time consuming. Next, we have seen the modulus method. The modulus method uh, right uh, it uh, uh, requires that we need to find out the surface area of the casting. Of course, in the in these lectures we have what is a considered some simple shaped castings. So, that is how we were able to find out the uh, what is a surface area of the castings very easily, but in practice the surface area would be very complex. In such a case calculating the surface area would be very tough that is how even the modulus method has got certain practical difficulties. And finally, we have seen the NRL method, the naval research laboratory method where uh, the what say uh, uh, time can uh, what say required would be very less within no time we can design the razor right. Also this surface area does not come into picture, but still we need to check the what say our design using the feed volume concept whether what we have designed is proper or not that way that also takes time. But fortunately the computers have what say come into, uh, into picture in the razor design using the computer softwares we can also design the razors. 
So, we will see certain important sorts uh, what say computer softwares that have been developed around the world to for the razor design. Important softwares for the razor design. One is the Magma Soft, another one is the AutoCast, another one is the SolidCast, another one is the ProCast and another one is the CAST CAE and there are more softwares which are available for the razor design. Let us quickly review what these softwares are. Magma Soft, right? it was developed by Magma Germany. Magma Soft predicts the following characteristics. Right? It predicts the razoring and gating system. We can design razoring and gating system. Internal porosity is predicted by this software Magma Soft. Residual stresses are predicted by this software. Hot tearing that is a defect which is a what is a cracking of the casting during solidification. So, this hot tearing is also predicted by Magma Soft. Finally, the microstructure which is very important as far as the properties are concerned that is also predicted by Magma Soft. But though it has got several components, one component is the what is the design of the razoring and gating. So, we can using this Magma Soft, we can design the razoring and gating. And this is an a, what is an example using the Magma Soft method, right. So, this is the computational model of the original rigging as used in the Magma Soft simulation. You can see, yes, these are all the sleeves where sleeves are used and here we are uh, placing the chills and this is the pouring cup and this is the sprue and it will successfully predict the uh, what is a design of the razor in different cases when sleeves are used, when sleeves are not used, when chills are there, when chills are not there. Likewise, in different cases what should be the dimension or the design of the razor it will be successfully predicting. Next one there is another software called AutoCast. So, this was developed by 3D Foundry Tech uh, Private Limited Mumbai in India, right. It has got three modules, one is part module, second one is the mould module, next one feed module and gate module and so on. Now, the feed module helps the foundry man to optimally design the razor and to optimally locate it in the right position, right. So, this software uh, we can use and this feed module will help us to design the razor, not only to design the razor, to locate the razor in the right position. So, this software can be used. So, this is a, an important software produced in, in India. And this is the optimization of the razor size and evaluation of the insulating sleeve by AutoCast feed module. Here we can see, right. So, here uh, the size of the razor is optimized and where in insulating sleeve is used. Next one, next software solid cast. It contains the razor design wizard and gating wizard design wizard. It can be used to simulate castings poured in grey cast iron, ductile cast iron, steel, aluminum, copper based alloys, nickel based alloys and almost any other alloy. And here we can see the what is a simulation using this uh, software under what is a uh, riser shrinkage predicted in grey iron casting simulated with solid cast. Next one we have the ProCast software, it was developed by ESI group. It has different modules like quick cast, right, uh, SAL, SA 3D etcetera, right. Among these modules SAL, SA 3D helps to calculate the riser size, gating and running systems especially for high pressure die casting process. Here we can see simulation using ProCast. Next one CAST CAE. So, this is another software developed by uh, a Finland company. This tool has different modules CAST design, CAST check and so on. Among these modules CAST design is a simulation package that helps in designing the razoring system for the casting and here we can see simulation using cast CAE.
friends till now what we have learned we have seen in these two lectures we have seen the feed volume concept right so alpha into vc plus vr is equal to eta f into vr where vc is the volume of the casting and vr is the volume of the razor and alpha is the percentage volumetric shrinkage of the cast metal and this is different for different cast alloys and eta f is the razor efficiency what is razor efficiency it is the ratio of feed metal available to the total volume of the razor we have also seen the methods to improve the razor efficiency the razor efficiency can be improved by direct achieving directional solidification again directional solidification can be achieved using insulating sleeves directional solidification can be achieved using chills directional solidification can also be achieved using exothermic materials next one the razor efficiency can be improved by adopting blind razors so this is what we have learned finally we have learned that modification of the razors design also helps us to improve the efficiency of the razor how to modify the razor design one is the multiple razor right multiple razoring second one bottle razoring safety margin and we have seen the other factors which will be helping us to improve the modify the design and this is the fifth lecture i am giving delivering on the uh, design of the razoring system in this uh, five lectures what we have learned we have seen the keynes method and in the keynes method uh, we have to find out the freezing ratio and also we have to find out the what say uh, surface uh, sorry uh, we have to find out the freezing ratio and accordingly we have to find out the uh, design of the razor and we have seen that keynes method is tedious and time consuming and we have seen the modulus method where the what say freezing ratio doesn't come into picture but we have to what say calculate the modulus of the casting and the modulus of the razor where modulus is the volume to surface area ratio of the volume to surface area and surface area we need to calculate and finally we have seen the naval research laboratory method so this was developed by the uh, us navy and here the what say modulus doesn't come into picture the surface area of the casting doesn't to come into picture only shape factor comes into picture and using the shape factor we can directly find out the what say uh, design of the razor using the razor curve and also the uh, razor what say height selection charts that is what we have learned in these five lectures finally we have seen how to uh, what say improve the razor's efficiency so with this uh, we are closing the design of the razoring system and in the next class i will be delivering the lecture on the design of the gating system thank you